Time for the NFL Week 12 recap, and things finally got back on track. Yep. Now, we started off our glorious turkey day with Bills vs. Lions, a very entertaining game to my surprise. Honestly, I'm starting to feel like I'm higher on the Bills than most people, and I'm in the wrong, but maybe Josh Allen's just not healthy enough yet, and once the defense gets back, then the Bills will continue their dominating path that I thought they would be on. Regardless, in this game, the Lions just played them close for the entire time, and had the Bills almost broken mentally for most of the game. Seriously, like, even at times where the Bills were winning the game, it seems like the Lions were just winning the game mentally. But, um, talent does not care about your mentality. And I swear in between plays, Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs would meet up, and Diggs would demand he get the ball, and then he would just burn his man and get the ball. He did that exactly to get the Bills a touchdown, and then on the next drive, he did the same exact thing to get them into field goal range to kick a game winner. Very exciting game from front to finish, and that's all I can ask for at 9.30 in the morning. This game, uh, well, not so much. The Giants cost themselves with penalties and mistakes early in the game, and in the long run, they just weren't able to out-talent the Cowboys. The formula to beat the Giants is simple. Stop Saquon Barkley, and you stop the Giants. It also didn't help that a lot of their O-line and defensive backs were infected with a biblical plague, and regardless, the Cowboys feasted on the corpse of the Giants. Didn't really learn anything from the Cowboys' perspective, it's just, you know... They're still good. Patriots? Exciting football? Alright, let's do it. Did not think that the Patriots would be playing punch for punch with one of the most explosive offenses in the entire league. But that's exactly what happened, as instead of Bill Belichick trying to keep the scores at minimum, he decided, nah, f it. Let's go balls out and try to beat the Vikings at their own game. This game was a battle of attrition, and unfortunately, just the Vikings special teams unit making one more play than the Patriots was enough to get the win for the Vikings. Really brutal loss for the Patriots in terms of making the playoffs. You're gonna need to bounce back, Bill. Uh... You know, I'm running out of metaphors for the Texans. Kyle Allen's not gonna help anything, and once again, you stop Damian Pierce, you stop the Texans, and the Dolphins just walked over them for 60 straight minutes. Gave them a little bit of a scare at the end, but it just didn't matter. I can't move it, move it anymore. It was said multiple times during this game, but this game really felt like a playoff atmosphere. Yeah, I know these teams played last year, but these two teams do feel like they should both win their division and possibly could meet in the playoffs because of that. They also match up really well against each other, as the Bengals just did everything they could to limit Derrick Henry, while the Titans did everything they could to limit Joe Burrow. Well, if you do the math and cross out both players, then who has the better team without those two stars? Well, it's the Cincinnati Bengals. There's just not enough receivers on this team for Tannehill to reliably throw to. Traylon Burks is coming into his own, but once once a play breaks down, it's kind of just dead. But I mean, this game shouldn't mean too much to the Titans. I mean, as seen by the Texans game before, uh, they don't have much to worry about in that division. Let's ride! Who in their right mind watched this game? Sam Darnold came back for the first time in what felt like five years, and I haven't heard anyone talk about this game. The Broncos just have this expertise of sucking all the life and fun out of a game of football. And this game was no exception, as the Panthers, already one of the most boring teams in the league, ran into the Broncos. I don't want to say anything else about this game. The Broncos are so, so screwed. Good luck with that pick, Seattle. Please, do well with it. The Messiah of New York has returned to resurrect the Jets. It's crazy that this is almost exactly what happened last year, except for the Jets actually have a good cast around the quarterback. Mike White was absolutely incinerating the Bears defense all day long. Now, I would put more merit into this game if Justin Fields was playing and not Trevor Simeon. We were so close to getting a Nathan Peterman versus Mike White game. Why not? Anyway, the Jets are still solid defensively and the best offensive team in the NFL by a long shot with their new quarterback. Now, will this keep up? We'll see next week, but I have my doubts.
Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very interesting game, to say the least. I fully expected the commanders to come into this game with an air-it-all-out mindset, and they did the exact opposite. They decided to beat the Falcons at their own game, using the running game to their advantage, with Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson just running over the Falcons all day long. Throw in some runs by Jonathan Williams and Curtis Samuel, and you got yourself a win, Washington. Crazy that we look at the Falcons as a team that's still in contention to win their division, and the Commanders at 7-5 and five as a team who has no chance. Guess, uh, guess it's just the way it is sometimes, Washington. Real tough. No! no. <laughs> I'm gonna say it now. This game, this one game, is the official death of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers season. It's at the point where they're not even losing to teams that are inferior to them. They are actually just at the level of competition as the Browns without a quarterback. I mean, Jacoby Brissett did fine, you know, revenge game and all that, but it really was just the Bucks' inability to be consistent throughout the entire game that cost them in the end. And as the game told on, injuries continued to pile up for the Bucks as guys like Antoine Winfield and Tristan Wirfs continued to go down and drop like flies. Then you get a blown coverage, leading to a wide open Amari Cooper to set up a Nicholas Chubb for a game winning touchdown. Uh, uh, who really won this game? I don't know, but the Browns got one more win on their win total, so... Oh my god, he's coming. Browns fans, it is time to rejoice. The re quarterback Deshaun Watson is coming back this week. Oh, you're not gonna make the playoffs. It doesn't matter. You have no hope. I said this before, but I ran out of energy a long time ago to care about your collapses, Ravens. You just, you play with no soul. I don't know how else to describe it. The Ravens' offense under Greg Roman is just kind of the same exact thing. It's effective, but how many times has it proven to work in the postseason? And especially as games wind down, this game being a perfect example of it, the Ravens just don't have the steam to make that one game ceiling play. And Trevor Lawrence took advantage. Connection after connection, leading the Jaguars down the field on a game-winning drive, one of his many on the season, where he connected with Marvin Jones on a game tying touchdown and then decided to go for two saying screw the extra point where he found Zay Jones for a game winner. You're slowly losing that grip on the AFC North Ravens. You should be worried. Whoa. What a weird game. This game that later turned into an offensive battle started off as a defensive one, with both sides of the field getting interceptions, setting their teams up for later scores. And once the points started coming in, boy they started coming in. Neither team could be stopped on offense throughout the entire game. Score after score after score, and finally we got into the point late into the game where one singular player just took over. And that player was Josh Jacobs as well as Max Crosby getting two crucial stops on defense, this led to Josh Jacobs capping off the Raiders' big day with a 86-yard walk-off overtime touchdown. Back-to-back -back overtime wins for the Raiders, and I gotta say, this is a team that is going to play every single team they play close from now on. For better, uh, or for worse. Fire Cliff Kingsbury. Just, just do it. Just do it already. His play calling is just so stale. I mean, look at all these weapons on the team and you do nothing with them. But for the most part, your talent was enough to bail you out until the last couple minutes of the game when the Chargers got their things together and started mounting a drive. They got their touchdown and instead of taking a tie like the Jaguars, they went for two and got it. If they did not get this, Brandon Staley probably would have been executed on this very night. But they got it, so the Chargers walk away with a win and continue their chances at a playoff berth. Once again, they just gotta be more consistent or else they're gonna get eaten alive pretty early on in the playoffs. Mahomes. No Stafford, no Cup, no Allen Robinson. What else is there to say? I didn't think I'd be saying this at this point in the year, but this game felt very similar to that Dolphins-Texans one. Just a beat down from start to finish. That's all there is to it. This was one of the weirder games of the week for sure. The 49ers throughout the entire game did not look like themselves and were inconsistent at best on most of their offensive drives. However, when you have a defense as dominant as theirs, as well as the Saints just making every possible mistake, then you can still escape with a pretty convincing win. 
I mean, the Saints were just killing themselves all game long with penalties, dropped passes, and two fumbles by their best offensive player. All of that, and you get a zero bomb. You had a chance to keep your season alive, and you just fumbled it. I, no pun intended there. I'm sorry. Well, this game was a real shame for Packers fans, because this is probably the best game they've played all year, and it just didn't matter. It looked like for both teams that they just had their second team scout defense on there the entire time, and the Packers were never able to stop Jalen Hurts even when their lives depended on it. Still, it made for a really entertaining game with a lot of scores, and for people saying that Jordan Love and Christian Watson are the future of the Packers, I think that's a little ambitious. Let's just give it some time and realize that they still still have Aaron Rodgers, for now. Help me! Help me! If it wasn't already clear to you, these two teams are terrible. This entire game was full of sloppy officiating, bad play, and even when it was close, there wasn't any real intensity in between the game itself. But we already knew that, and regardless, the Steelers' defense was by far the best unit on the entire field, and that was enough to get a win. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, then subscribe and watch this video right here on the worst NFL predictions in the history of the game. It's pretty good, trust me. Anyways, until next time.